If you have Microsoft Office 365, you can actually use it to get historical exchange rate data. So very easy to do, and that's what I want to show you in this video. Now, before I do that, let me just uh, recap for those of you who may be a little bit unfamiliar with um, exchange rates, the quote convention. So you see a quote convention like this, GBP slash USD. Now over here, I have the um, ticker symbols essentially for these different um, currencies. So the Canadian dollar is CAD, the British pound, GBP, etc. So when you see this, this GBP slash USD, normally if we were thinking about it, from a mathematical perspective, we would read it as like pounds per dollar. But that's actually not correct. It's actually the opposite of that. The first currency listed is what we call the base currency. The second currency is what we call the quote currency. So this quote of GBP slash USD is actually the number of dollars it takes to buy a British pound. So Let's see how we can get this, this data. It turns out we can use the stock history function, which I've used to show you how to get stock price data. And there are certain, certain info you want to put in here. So we need a start date, an end date. We can decide on the interval. We want daily data, weekly, or monthly. So let's start with our end date. Let's say today is the end date. So really easy to do this. Type in today open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and you get today's date. And let's say we want to go back a year. So we can say equals this minus 365. So here we have a year, the, uh, two, uh, February 2nd, 2022 is our start date. February 2nd, 2023 is our, is our end date. And let's say we want to look at weekly data to begin with. So let's go down here and let's type in equals, whoops, before I do that I'm going to decide which exchange rate I want and I'm going to have to put in this quote convention. So since I have this here, let's put in GBP slash USD. So we're going to figure out how much a pound costs? How many dollars does a pound cost? So let's see here. So we're going to use that stock history function. And it's going to ask for the stock, which is actually this quote here. And then it wants the start date, the end date, and the interval. And then if I type in a zero, it won't give me any headings. So I won't know what the date is, and I won't know whether I have the high or the low or the close price. So I'm going to type in a one here. And then I have these properties here. Zero is the date, one is the close, two is the open, etc. So I'm going to put them all in. I'm going to close it up, and let's see what we get here. We're waiting. And hopefully we will get some exchange rate data. Ah, there we go. A little slow, but you can see the different prices here, right? So this is how many dollars it takes to buy a pound sterling. So back in... Um, January 31st of 2022, it cost $1.35. Now, a year later, it's $1.24. What does that mean? That means the dollar has actually appreciated. It takes less dollars to buy a pound sterling. So you can see we can get that. We could change the interval from, let's say, weekly to monthly. So I'll change that to two. And it'll be busy again, and hopefully it won't take too long to pop up our new quotes. But you'll get the new quotes, and this will be, you'll get 12 months of those. A little bit slower than we would like for some, some reason. 
But there we go. We get that. We could change the quote here. So we could change from, you know, uh, how many dollars it takes to buy a pound. Let's say how many, let's say how many yen it takes to buy a dollar. USD slash JPY. Okay. So because I've put the information here in separate cells, I don't have to go back to the stock history function. When I hit that, this should change and should give us the monthly how many yen it takes to buy a dollar. And you can see that back in uh, 22, it was about 115 almost. Now it's 128, close to 130. So what you have here is, again, the dollar has gotten stronger. It takes more yen to buy a dollar. So this is really quite handy as long as you know the um, symbols for the different foreign currencies you can get this historical data which um, oftentimes can be quite handy